Oh, crap. I need a third hand. That's not going to work. There we go. Well, it's fixed! At least they told me it was. So the little guy inside this alternator that tells it when to quit charging decided to go on vacation or something. So they had to put a new one in it. So now all I got to do, put it back on the truck and hopefully our high voltage issues are solved. Oh, that thing's not the lightest. Now, do you guys remember in the last video, this little bolt that I lost? Spent about 20 minutes looking for it in about the only spot it could go. Yeah, well, I've basically decided that that bolt is lost to the world. I've given up looking for it. So, I grabbed another one. Luckily, it's just a quarter inch bolt. And last but not least, we've got our serpentine belt we got to get back on. The only test I got to do now is fire it up and make sure it actually solved our problem. All right, here goes nothing this time. Um, nothing. That's not what I expected. The truck is dead now. Well, shoot, guys. I really don't know what to do. I'm thinking. I'm thinking, thinking, but I'm not solving, solving. Maybe if I just keep trying it. Well, I ended up checking all my fuses. Never saw anything bad. Gave it a few minutes and tried it again and, well, I've got power, so let's see what happens. Looks like it's holding at that 14 and a half range. turning just fine and my dash isn't shutting off so I think that solved our issue I don't know why it wasn't starting earlier but it's running now and I just got word from mom that she is headed back from the international dealership and she's got me a brand new coolant tank I am running over to my house where that truck currently sits to swap out that coolant tank because somebody forgot to drop the trailer off that truck before I removed the coolant tank. So I can't hook our trailer back onto this truck until I fix that one. There she is. Yay. Ooh, nice we get a fancy clear one. Or clear one. Yep. Now we'll be able to see the level. <laughs> I told him, yeah, I said 50% of the time I take the wrong parts home. Yep. So check it. <laughs> yeah. Like a glove. Beautiful. Yep. Got to be quick with it. Got it. But now my hands are soaked. So now I need to at least try and dry this off a little bit. That way if I do have any more leaks I'll be able to see them moment of truth well 
One down. Well, it didn't quite get me to the full mark, but it's at least within range. So there's enough in there that I can at least get the truck started, get it running, make sure I don't have any leaks, and get it off this trailer. Well, I think our five truck fleet is at least back up to four at the moment. And we meet again. Now well, he's slowly chipping away at it. It's only got from here to those trees. Probably another, I don't know, 30 acres maybe? Well, that little bin's the one we're gonna fill next once dad moves over here to this field. But backing up this way, gonna load the trucks on the right side of the auger so you guys see the problem? This thing is on the wrong side. Which means I have to unhook the tractor, spin that sucker all the way around, rehook up, and then back up. The real tricky part now is gonna be seeing if I can get this auger set perfectly over that bin by myself. Well, that looks pretty good to me for now. I'll double check it once we get corn flowing. This will stay like this. This is actually an old lane. So in order to keep the trucks on the lane, at this farm, we keep this little, I don't I call it a jump auger over here and it's a little heavy it'll probably take two hands but we hook that to the tractor and we run it right here into that one into the bin that way the truck can stay on this packed and is not trying to back in and out of the yard and roughing it up even more than it already is Hey, you don't have time to be talking to your wife. You're working. <laughs> Surprise! Surprise! <laughs> Are you getting tired of your long trek? Yeah, dude, it's exhausting. You know, from here to right there? The whole 50 yards we have to go is just super exhausting. So the guys and mom have all moved on to the next field and they're dumping into that bin that I just set up, switching between that bin and Jipville. So another 115 acres that I am not needed and that's okay because I have a 2660 that I need to get finished up for cover crop. So I've got to install a lift switch. I've got to install a couple adapters to get my backup camera on the monitor and then I have to retie the air seeder back into the harness because we disconnected it this spring when we were just running the tillage without the cedar. This is gonna be a learning curve. I'm gonna learn right along with you guys because I have never ran this air cedar on the Gen 4 style tractors. This one is kind of set up like the sprayer. I've only ever ran it on the 2630 monitors, which is the previous generation to what's in this tractor. But I think it's going to be pretty nice once I figure it out. All right, so the hooking up part, hooking the air seeder back into the harness shouldn't be hard because, well, I think it was just these two, oh, these three, and I taped them off. So should be as simple as untaping them and plugging them back in. Okay. Yep, simply plug them back in. Sure. Ah, it's because I broke it last year, apparently. And now, 
That's as good as clamped. Okay, push that back up in there. Now I just have to reroute my lift switch, which is going to make me start climbing because I didn't lower the implement like I should have. Ugh. Okay, so this is the lift switch, and the way this thing works, there's mercury in here that when it's up like this, it closes the circuit, but yet when the mercury runs this way, it opens the circuit. So right now, when it's tilted forward, the circuit's open, telling the tractor that the thing is lifted. As I let this implement down, this thing will rotate, and that mercury will slide, close the contact, and tell the tractor that the implement is now lowered. Very rudimentary, but it works. And that adapter, just like that, it'll feed along this harness. And zip tie up and it'll plug in back over there I got that lift switch all wired in and plugged into that two prong right there between the hoses clip and honestly it was a partial guess because it's been so long since I unhooked it I don't remember Specifically if that's the right one, but it's the only open clip I had so I'm gonna roll with it last thing I got to do Harness wise these new 8r series tractors have Special clips down here for the cameras. This camera cable is gonna hook into this harness With this adapter Let's See if I can even get my fingers in here to let them release <laughs> oh there we got one all right so I'm gonna hook this up and I'm before I get all gung-ho on wrapping all this extra camera cable up I'm gonna at least make sure it's how it should be and I've got picture on the monitor but the fact that I had the right ends and everything just plugged in is a really good sign <laughs> blah 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 all your safety things so this is my true set. I know that that's what runs the actual tillage. Oh, look at that. Hang on. Oh, there's okay. There's my rate controller. So the air seeder is coming up, but I want to set that up later. What I want to do right down here, video. Ha! <laughs> look at that. So basically when this thing is all folded up, and yes, I am finally gonna wash these windows while I'm in here. With that huge air seeder in between the two wings, you cannot see behind you going down the road whatsoever. So that's where this comes in. We put that on not long after we got it. I think I finally figured it out. Um, I've got my dry rate controller for my cover crop. I've got my true set for my all my tillage parameters. I've got my guidance, what field I'm in, and then I've got my map that'll show all my coverage. And then I'm going to go outside where I can get some GPS signal, run through some trial runs and see if everything works. Well that's much better. You guys think I can fit through there without folding up? We're gonna find out, but I, I doubt I can. As long as my wing baskets don't catch the propane tank. Oh, beautiful. All right, so we already know that my camera works, so that was a check. 
I know the dry air seeder is working because that's all showing up. The only thing I have to check now is my lift switch. So do you guys see this little up arrow? Now when I lower the implement, that should go to a down arrow. Boom. All right. Three for three, everything works. And as soon as I started running through the field, had all five of my hydraulics running, and the tractor started telling me extremely low hydraulic fluid. Gonna pull back over here to the shed and get that tank topped off so I'm not worried about that anymore. I don't know how well you guys can see that, but it's a little low. This is my low mark. Here's where it's currently at. So definitely low. I wouldn't consider it crazy low, but we're gonna go ahead and get it topped off. That's a little better. We're right in the middle of the gauge now. All right, well, as you guys can tell, I have, I am losing my light. So if you didn't know, this joystick, yeah, well, it's new to me even. So I have finally figured out my, just the tillage part of it. So that's all. I'm good there. So we're tilling. And see, this is my problem right now. It says I should be seeding, but apparently there's no RPMs on my meter rolls. So that is, I got everything figured out on the tillage. And then I'm going to lift up. And all good there. So. I'm going to have to go back there and figure out why my meter rolls are not turning. And it may be something that has to wait till tomorrow when I have another pair of hands so that I can work the monitor in here while somebody is back there seeing what the heck is going on. So my blower is working. I can hear it spinning. I know it's blowing. But what the monitor is telling me is not working is these meter rolls that push the grain or the cereal rye into the tubes to seed, those are not turning when they're supposed to. Ugh. Are controlled by this motor, which is warm. So it's getting fluid. I don't know. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna need another set of hands and eyes for this problem. All right, well, I found this. I'm assuming that's supposed to be plugged into something. But at the moment, I've got zero clue what that is. Turns out, I don't think that plug-in was anything. I think it was kind of like an alarm thing that we never have used. So I don't think that's my issue, but there's no way for me to visually check all of these meters and clutches and motor without being back here, but still being in the cab to turn things on and off. So unfortunately, that part's gonna have to wait for another day. Uh, everything else was a success. Everything else plugged in right. Everything else went smoothly. So it is what it is. Hopefully it's an easy fix once I get another set of hands here. That's gonna be it for today, guys. I did, I feel like I went everywhere today and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Today's fact, it's a simple one. You ever start anything new? either plan on it taking twice as long as you thought or only getting half as much done as you thought. Subscribe if you haven't and we'll see you in the next one.